going to talk about tone, specifically country guitar tone. It's something I get asked about quite a lot, and it's pretty straightforward. I'm not really a pedal guy. Um, you might be surprised to find out the rig that I'm playing through today. I'm just going to show you. Is this bad boy right here? Just a cube. That's my tone setting. Going through the clean channel and uh, just a little bit of slap back. You don't need a whole bunch of pedals. I mean, unless you're going for an early 90s Brent Mason sound and then a compressor is, is kind of necessary. But I find that I don't really need much. You need, you know, not even like a, a really good amp to be quite honest. If I was playing live, I would tend to use a Fender Deluxe Reverb or a Twin Reverb or a Princeton, just like a standard Fender style amplifier or an amp that is like that. But you know, you can play and sound pretty authentic. I mean, I reckon that'll fool a lot of people to find out I'm playing through like, I don't know, five watt Roland Cube amp or whatever it is. I don't even know what it is, it's just the amp that's in this room. The main thing is that the tone comes from your fingers. That is the most important thing. I spend most of my time playing unplugged and I can pull pretty decent sound just out of this paddle here. You know, I don't know if you can hear this, I'll move forward a little bit, but... I mean, I just know from the way that sounds and also how it feels, tone is a, it, you know, it's a tactile thing, how it feels on this guitar, that if I plug into an amplifier that has, you know, a decent clean channel, and I'm able to just do a little bit of contouring, you know, I usually set my, my mids to about 12 o'clock, I usually set my trebles to about 11 o'clock, and I sometimes roll my tone knob off here a little bit, depending on you know, the make of the amplifier, it might be just a little bit too bright on the high strings. And I often have my bass at about one o'clock. And that's kind of what I tend to have on, on any amplifier, you know. I, depending on the gear, I might have a little bit of slap back, or I might just have a bit of reverb. I usually don't play totally dry. Uh, it's quite an unforgiving sound. More often than not, it tends to just be reverb that I use. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not much more to it than that. It's really, it's how you attack the strings. Now, I am a flesh guy. So when I play, when I chicken pick, I'm actually using the flesh of my fingertips, not my nails. Uh, the reason for that is very practical. I spent many years playing classical guitar and the nails are where your tone comes from. And so I found, I started using my nails and then after about 20 minutes of chicken picking, I destroyed my nails and I couldn't play classical guitar anymore, which was a real drag since I was studying at university. And, uh, or, you know, high school, back when I was a kid. So I just, you know, figured I'd better play with my flesh and guys like Tommy Emmanuel play with their flesh and he's got a really beautiful, earthy sound when you hear him sort of finger pick. And so what I tend to do, I'm just gonna angle my guitar here so you can see it, is I get my finger and I go underneath the string like that. So if I just angle down here, you might be able to see I'm getting a lot of surface, a lot of finger surface on the actual string. And so just the mass of that on the string gives me a bigger sound as opposed to just playing with my nail. You know, try and, I have very sort of short nails. I'll try and play something with a nail, give you an idea. <laughs> It's got a really kind of prickly Bakersfield sound, which is cool for certain things. That's it's not the sound I want to use all the time, but if I'm going to do like an authentic Buckaroos non rich thing, I might play with my nails. But most of the time, for the kind of country music that I'm either booked to play or I want to play myself, I want a kind of well rounded, funky, slinky sound. A lot of people don't necessarily realize how funky country music actually is. Uh, a lot of that, I think, has to do with Brent Mason. He just has such a funky, double stop sound, which I know tips his hats to Jerry Reed, but ultimately it's it's very much like a, a Ray Charles, Dr. John, Norland's piano kind of thing, all of that. That kind of thing. So what I would 
encourage you guys to do, you can do a bunch of exercises, and I have a video on this called Chicken Picking Technique, which gets you used to putting your fingers slightly underneath the string and popping them up. You get more of a spank when you do that. But just take a lick that you're used to. It might be, you know, in the key of E, you might have this lick. And practice, I'm going down with the pick on that first note. Get a nice round tone. I'm using a blue chip pick. I find for me that gets the tone that I want. I attack it in such a way that I get as much surface of the pick on the string so I get a bigger sound. Then I'm going to pull that string up. A lot of the tone also is in the notes that you don't play, and that might sound kind of strange, but notice that I mute the B string there so that the E string can ring through. Sort of like mixing, you know, when you're making a record. Mixing is all about sorting things out so that the good stuff can come through. And I don't want too much to compete with the, the, the line that I'm playing, so I focus on the main note that I'm playing and I play it well, and that means that you just hear this clean tone. Like that. Depending on the context of what you're playing in, like if you were doing a ballad, I wouldn't spank those notes. I would probably play it with a little bit of fingertip and a touch of nail, just for that articulation, and it means I don't get that aggressive spank. So if it was, you know, just a ballad, so like a... Like... But when it starts to get into kind of, I don't know, Alan Jackson Summertime Blues territory, that's where I really want to spank those strings, you know? <laughs> so many people talking about how I need this amp and I need this guitar I need these pedals and I found when I was a teenager I started to get caught up a lot in that sort of gear chasing and don't get me wrong I love gear I love guitars and I always want to try out a new amp and a new pedal but I realized that that wasn't going to make me a better player it wasn't going to give me a better tone you know you look at someone like Mark Knopfler there are stacks of videos of him online playing different guitars and he still sounds like Mark Knopfler. It doesn't matter if it's a Strat or a Les Paul or a Telecaster, it still sounds like Mark Knopfler. And that really struck a chord with me, no pun intended, that I was like, well, if he can just do that, like obviously the tone is here and I just have to be able to develop that ability. And it's very liberating because you don't know where you're going to be for any necessary, like, you know, any gig, you know, if you're on the road and you don't necessarily know what amp you're gonna have. I've done a stack of gigs where turned up and thought that I would have a Fender Twin Reverb and I have a solid state, you know, keyboard amplifier. It's less than ideal, but you work with what you've got and it might not be the tone that you're really hoping for, but most people in the audience are none the wiser because you know how to work with the sort of, the materials that you have and you can get that sound. Practice as much as you can, unplug. Try and really, like, there's not a lot to an instrument like this. You know, it essentially is just a plank of wood with strings, but you can get really decent tone out of it, you know? Or really sweet. So it is, I think, deceptively simple, but also a bit hard to do in reality when you actually have to sit down and practice playing with your fingers. You will develop blisters on the sort of the fingers that you choose to play with, whether you're a thumb pick person or playing with a flat pick. But once you push through that after about a week or so, then they'll turn into calluses and you just get this fantastic tone. So look, try this stuff here. And um, yeah, it's, it's not as complicated as you think it might be. You know, the, tone, the tone's already here. You just gotta learn how to, to get it out. And anything that you choose to put on your pedal board should be something that uses an effect. It's not a habit, and it's not something that you need to get your tone. Uh, you've got everything you need in your fingertips. You just have to learn how to sort of 
work it out. So let's play a couple of lines so you can hear. I think I might play on an angle so you can kind of see my right hand doing what it does. 